Welcome to the Chapel of Grandview University and the preaching ministry of Luther Memorial Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. As we gather together as God's people, we gather together knowing that we need God's mercy and grace. So let us approach God and ask for his forgiveness, for his mercy and love. Let us confess. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Listen to the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for you, and for his sake God forgives you all your sins. As a call and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I declare to you the forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You are forgiven. Amen. Come thou fount of every blessing To my heart to sing thy grace Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Today's scripture reading comes from Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom. Come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. 
But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep, aw keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. Here ends the reading of the Lord. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Do you have a friend who's always late? You know, that person who would be late to their own funeral? Hey, that's me. I'm always late. I find myself always running five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes behind. I try to, to be on time, but I always try to sneak in one last email, one last phone call, or if on my way I see someone, I stop, I talk, and then I'm late. I'm always late. In our gospel reading, Jesus is, is, tells a parable about the kingdom of God, and in the parable, he, he sets it up this way. He talks about uh, a groom who's late to his own wedding. And as he's waiting, there's these 10 bridesmaids who are just, they're waiting for him to, to arrive. And as they're waiting, the hour gets late, they fall asleep, and finally he arrives in the middle of the night. And when he arrives at the middle of the night, the 10 try to light their lamps in order to be ready for the party. But only five of them had enough oil in their lamps. The other five didn't. And so they had to run to town in the middle of the night to get oil and come back. And by the time they came back, the party was over. I mean, they just, they couldn't join the party. They, they missed it because they weren't prepared. And the big, the key verse in all of it is, is verse 13 that says, Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour when the Lord will return. So how are we to make sense of this parable? What's the point? I, many people think the point of the parable is to be prepared. I call this the, the Boy Scout interpretation, always be prepared. Or, or another way of saying it is the Marie Lackey, my mom's approach to life. When it comes to life, my mom is prepared. She is always prepared. In fact, when I went on scouting and went on trips, we'd go on hikes. And these hikes might be an hour long or two hours long. And my mom would have, give me the largest canteen ever. I mean, kids had a little bottle to carry them through the hike. I had this thing that was like, it seemed like 50 gallons. It was enormous. But even more than that, my mom wanted to make sure the water was cool. And this canteen that was insulated, she would freeze the water. So here I am on my hike going through it. And I have an ice cube that won't melt. And it's just terrible, right? Because everyone's drinking out of their bottle. I'm carrying this hunk of ice on my side, and it's not melting. And so like, halfway through, I'll, I'll open it up and get one little drop, you know? But I was prepared. And, uh, and so I think many people think that's what this parable is about, being prepared. And in, in some ways, it is, but maybe not the way you think about it, of course. I mean, it is important to be prepared as a Christian, as church, it's important to make preparations. I mean, that's what we've been doing at the church during this, this pandemic. We've been making all kinds of preparations. We have moved to an online ministry where we are actually recording services and, and making that available. We're really proud of what we've been doing, but it takes a lot of work and we're doing it because we think it's a way for the gospel to be proclaimed. We're glad that you are participating in this. And, and just a short plug, like if there's ever any sermon that you just really like, share it with a friend. Or if, as you're listening to a message and something moves you, send me an email. Or go to our church website if you want to support it and, and, and give a donation. Or we even have places for you to, to offer prayer requests. Like, engage us in this, because we're trying to do church with you in the midst of a pandemic. So that's kind of, we're preparing ourselves to do ministry at this time. There's other things we're doing as a church as well. We, we're starting small group ministries. Why? Because we know we're getting disconnected. We can't be in large groups, but we can gather in small ones. So these are ways that we're trying to be prepared in the midst of all that's going on. And so being prepared is important. And in some ways, the parable is talking about that. But it's doing more than just talk about being prepared. Because remember, Jesus is speaking about the kingdom of God. And in truth, when we look at those five bridesmaids who are foolish versus five bridesmaids who are wise, the difference is that they were prepared, five of them, 
for the groom to be late. The first group, the five were the optimistic ones. Ah, oh, he'll show up on time. But the ones who were prepared, they understood that the bridegroom was possibly late. And I think this is really important because the first group, they're the ones who went through life just, just optimistic. They, they go, oh yeah, the wedding's going to start at four and it's going to start at four. But the second group, they're not pessimistic. They're not like, oh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be 10 hours later. That's not what it's about. They just, they know something about the groom. They know the groom's the type of person who gets sidetracked. The groom's the type of person who might on the way come across a friend and, and decide, hey, let's talk a little bit, or might see someone in need and might stop and help them. The five who were wise, they were wise because they understood, they, they knew that the groom often is late because the groom's merciful. Way back in the Bible, in 2 Peter 3, we hear these words about why God is delaying to come to this world, to, to, to put it all right. And we hear these words. It says, But do not, do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but for all to be saved. In other words, what Peter is saying is that when God is slow to show up, it's because God's being merciful. I want you to think of it this way. If God showed up and decided to put all things right 16 years ago, I wouldn't have Abby, my oldest daughter. If God decided to show up and make all things right 13 years ago, I wouldn't have Sydney, my, my middle daughter. Or if God decided to show up 12 years ago to make all things right in this world, I wouldn't have Brenna. God's slowness, as much as it might drive all of us nuts as we're praying for God to heal the land or heal us or to make all things brand new to, on that great and glorious day, God's slow because he's giving us time for more life to occur, more mercy to occur, more gospel to occur, more people to hear the good news of Jesus. His slowness is his mercy, giving us all chance. And you see the difference between the, the, the foolish bridesmaids and the wise ones is that the wise ones, they knew that's what the bridegroom is like. They knew that's what the kingdom of heaven is like, that God is so merciful, he's willing to take his time. Let me illustrate it this way. I one time did a wedding for a couple who, they are just is a striking couple, beautiful couple. He was really organized, very smart. He's entrepreneurial. He's started he start a couple businesses. He's great. Is a backyard wedding. And she, on the other hand, she is creative, lovely. She makes jewelry and, and clothing. And so right when it's time to start the wedding, there's only about 20 of us in the backyard. But when it's time to begin the wedding, I get a word that the, the bride's not ready. I'm like, okay, she's not ready. What's it going to be? Well, they said it's going to be about two hours late. And the reason it was two hours late was because she was still making her dress. She was literally making her wedding gown at that time, and she was being creative, and she, was, she liked different things, and she was putting her dress together. No joke. But here's the best part. The groom knew that this is how she is, and her family knew it as well. And, and, and so at that moment, a couple of people brought out some food and some snacks and some drinks, and we had the best two hours waiting for, for the bride. And why did we have it? Because we had this party because they knew what she was like. And it wasn't a bad thing. It was, it was their joy. And we got to be part of the joy. That's what's going on in this parable. The wise bridesmaids are the ones who know what the groom is like. 
And so let me tell you a little bit about that groom. The groom that is Jesus. The groom is like this. He's like a shepherd who has a hundred sheep. And when losing one, he's willing to put the 99 aside and spend the whole day looking for one. Then he throws a party. He loves a party. He's like the good Samaritan who has on the way to his wedding sees a man laying down on the side of the road and says, well, it's better late that I'm better late to be at the wedding in order to take care of this man. And he bandages him, takes him to the end, and then he gets to the wedding. This is a man who's like a father who's sitting there and, and he sees his, home, his son coming home from a distance says, I know there's a party I need to get to, but this is my son. Let me run to him. Our bridegroom loves the party. And if there's not enough guests, then he's going to send out his servants, go himself and try to find more people to bring him into the party until it's going to be overflowing. The groom loves to be late because he loves to give mercy. And so at this time, as we're living in this world where we don't know where God's at, take heart because the groom is busy. Sure, it's not a party right now. No, he's delayed. Why? Because he's bringing more people to the party. And the call for us then is to be like those wise bridesmaids, to fill our jugs with oil. In other words, to bring more people in, to pray and to love and to create ministries and to create ministries that are online and in person and small groups. It's time for us so that we can share the good news with others. It's time to, to care for our families and to thank God for grandchildren who are being born. It's time to, to laugh. It's time to mourn. It's time to see God in weddings and funerals, knowing that, that his delay is mercy, a mercy for you and for me and for this world. So be wise like those bridesmaids. Know that you have a great groom who's on his way. He just has a lot more mercy to give. And so as we wait, as you wait, let us look forward to that great day. In Jesus' name, amen.
love to those around me. Please join me in reading the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our refuge and strength, you've bound us together in a common life. In our conflicts, help us to confront one another without hatred or bitterness. Help us to listen to your voice amid competing com claims and to work together with mutual forbearance and respect for one another. O oh Lord, watch over us and our loved ones and our nation at this time and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. You are free in Christ. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.